Good evening. I'm hereby calling to order the October 9, 2023 Committee of the Whole meeting. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. The purpose of the meeting tonight is to, dis to discuss the following, a new dispatch supervisor position, non-sworn employee, creation of an, um, of an additional lieutenant position, and hiring <coughs> one additional patrol officer. This time I will turn the, the meeting over to the police chief, Chief Neely. Thank you. Thank you for coming in early. I appreciate the time for the Committee of the Whole. In front of you, you have a, a memo uh, that I drafted and should have been sent out with your packets explaining what tonight's proposal is and what's on the legislation. Uh, additionally, I'm going to be working off of uh, what was a PowerPoint. I uh, couldn't get it to switch over to a PowerPoint for this evening, but uh, it was from a safety committee meeting that was held on August 23rd. Uh, kind of reviewing the proposal and showing you some, some graphs and diagrams. Back in 2013, about 10 years ago, our department was restructured so we could create the Community Operations Office. As I'm sure all of you know, uh, it's been an important office for us. But by doing that, we moved two supervisors off the road and into these positions. Uh, we went from having four lieutenants and four sergeants on each of our four shifts to two lieutenants overseeing two shifts each within a sergeant assigned each shift. Uh, so it kind of depleted some of the, both the manpower on the road as well as some of the supervision on the road. Uh, what tonight's proposal is, is about is putting those two lieutenants back on the road. And we can do that by uh, creating a new position through the uh, dispatch supervisor position, which would be a non-sworn position uh, that would be presented to you for, for tonight's vote. Uh, as you'll see in the, the graph here, the stats here, our, our call volume has increased substantially over the last few years, uh, even taking COVID into consideration. 20 years ago was the last time we added any patrolmen to our department. And back then, we averaged uh, probably between 12 to 13,000 calls per year as a police department. So we've, we've more than doubled that, or we've doubled that over the past 20 years. And as you can see from January to June, halfway through the year when these stats were compiled, uh, you can see we're, we're right on pace to pretty much match 2022's numbers. To break down by our what's called our part one crimes, which are some of our more serious crimes in the city. Uh, the last line, the one that's highlighted that you have in front of you, is uh, just a six month snippet of what we currently have. So you can see we're on pace to either exceed those numbers or match those numbers in many cases. Uh, some of the ones that, that jump out at me anyway are the amount of firearms that we're seeing uh, the drugs, and the amount of arrests. So our, our jail population has increased. We have more than, we've had more than 100 prisoners more than we had last year at this point. Currently, we have 38 full-time sworn officers. We have a five officer minimum per shift. So we have six officers assigned to each of our four, four platoons on the road. That's one sergeant and five patrol. Then we have two lieutenants, each are assigned to two of the platoons. So they bounce back and forth between the two platoons. The problem with this is you don't have the continuity of supervision overseeing the same supervisors, overseeing the same officers every day. And those officers, those lieutenants that are bouncing back and forth between the two shifts can't properly supervise two shifts when they're only working with them half the time. So as I said, we have a five officer minimum. And this is what our current organizational chart looks like. The names in red are current movement. We have two promotions and one officer uh, reassigned to our detective bureau. So 
you can see Officer Rattuno and Officer Leonard are the two platoon lieutenants. They oversee two of those shifts each. This is a 12 year look back, I'm sorry, 12 month look back over the past year. Uh, all the highlighted shifts are where we're at shift minimums. So it's 72% of the time we've been at shift minimums. So when officers call off sick, uh, when officers are on vacation, when officers are at school, some training, we end up paying out overtime. Uh, we estimated that uh, we paid out about $75,000 in overtime over the past 12 months to cover, make sure that we were at shift minimums. The proposed organizational chart for next year, starting January 1st, would look like this. As you see, the biggest difference is having the four lieutenants overseeing four shifts. They'd be permanently assigned to those shifts. So you'd have the same supervisors working with the same officers. Uh, one of the biggest benefits to this is you get to know your officers. You get to, you have proper accountability on the shift and you have a better working relationship. It also frees up the officers by adding an additional officer on each shift. They can attend training, they can attend schools, uh, they can take vacation time, none of which would cause overtime. So we'll talk about the dispatch supervisor position and I'm gonna go back to the chart we were just on in a minute. When Sergeant Oberdoster reaches his uh, he reached his 65th birthday, and according to city ordinance, he has to retire at the end of this year. Uh, Sergeant Obros has been with us for 25 years, and he's currently been with dispatch, or he's been overseeing dispatch as a sergeant. For the past at least 15 years, we've had a sworn officer overseeing the dispatch. The difficult part about that is an officer doesn't know the ins and the outs of a dispatcher's job. So you have a supervisor supervising over people that they don't necessarily know the technical aspects of their job. Uh, Sergeant Obroser has been a great fit in this position. He's actually worked to learn the dispatch position and he's, he's really fit the mold really for the first time where we found somebody that really, really is fixing some of the problems that we've had in dispatch, uh, whether it's you know, procedural stuff, or even just some of the internal problems that were never addressed. Uh, Don is one of those people that truly cares. He's, he's in the position for the right reason. And you know, it's it's sad that we're we're losing him as an officer, but if we create the dispatch supervisor position, we could continue utilizing him in this capacity. So I'm gonna go back to that other chart. And you can see in the left-hand column, that would be under communications. You see Sergeant Oberdoster overseeing that. Uh, this is the same the same setup as you have currently. Uh, the only difference is he wouldn't be a sworn officer. All the highlighted areas are the sworn officers. Oh, I'm sorry, all the, uh, the yellow highlighted. So what we would do is move that sergeant's position, Sergeant Oberdoster's position, we move it into community operations. That's currently being uh, head up by one of our lieutenants, that position would be moved to the road. So that'd be one of your, your four lieutenants. In order to create that additional fourth lieutenant to fill up all four shifts, we'd promote one additional lieutenant and hire one additional officer. So for the first time in 20 years, we'd go from 38 officers to 39 officers on the department. And this can all work if if in fact Sergeant Oberos sort of moves into that uh, that position of super, dispatch supervisor. In addition to uh, to his duties overseeing dispatch, he handles the people at the front office, so our, our clerk records, uh, and he assists with CLIA. Currently, we don't have a, an accreditation manager. Uh, our current our our previous accreditation manager resigned, uh, so we, we kind of were left figuring out the ins and outs of Kalia. And Don has been instrumental in, in getting us up to speed. 
it's more of a committee at this point. There's four of us working on it as opposed to one person that we had in the past. But Don's been instrumental in, in keeping us up to speed on that. So part of his duties would be also to, to help us maintain Kalia. So that, that pretty much in a nutshell is, is the way our vision of, of putting two additional officers on the road by creating this dispatch supervisor position and restructuring things. We aren't losing anybody in community operations. Uh, we're just changing out the type of supervision. You're moving from a lieutenant to a sergeant. We are, we are hiring one additional officer and promoting one additional sergeant to lieutenant. So that's how this would all work. You guys have any questions? Does any member of council have any questions? <coughs> Mrs. Savetta? Yes. Um, I'm looking at the meeting minutes, very good minutes, and I'm seeing that the proposal, the required 150,000 increase to the budget. Okay, for 2024, correct? That is not correct. Uh, since then, we've decided that we need to replace that uh, front window person. So originally, the meeting, that, the safety committee meeting that was held in August was less than a month after uh, Adam Grabowski had resigned. And uh, we thought that we could make do without that position. Not only could we, did we find out that all those tasks that she completed were dumped onto Sergeant Obroser and one of our other, uh, our daytime dispatcher, but we also, we had a, a grievance filed by the union as well. Uh, I think even without the grievance, we would still come to the same conclusion that that position did need replace. So at this point, we plan on replacing that. So you would have, she she was making 67,000 plus benefits when she when she resigned. So that would be added on to that amount, that 150,000. You would hire someone in that amount? It, it depends on their qualifications. Obviously, the, the mayor and uh, human resources would and, and finance would have a say in, in what the amount was that they were hired on. It's a pay range that that position has. So I don't know what the what the fixed amount would be when we finally get to it. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing ballpark, it would probably be around there. It's my only question. Mr. DeJohn. Just a question uh, for Mrs. Fagan. Um, so are you endorsing this? With the increase in the amount of calls that the uh, police department has, I think it's something we definitely need to look at. Um, it is something that is being, as I'm preparing 24's budget, I'm baking this into the budget now as we're talking about it. Um, can we afford it? Yes, we can. Is that the question you're asking? Okay, yes. I wasn't sure what the question was. Yes, yes, we can afford this. All right, thank you. And then I just wanted to go over um, Patrolman or his new salary would be, it says 80774 Yeah, That was, uh, it was actually, seven, it's 79190 uh, but that does not include if there's a pay pay increase next year with uh, to the, the members of the negotiations. Yeah, during the negotiations, and it's going to be under pay ordinance. But where did I see eighty eight thousand? That was uh, that was probably in the memo, or it, it might have been uh, it might have been in the memo or the original memo that was sent out. But uh, that was an estimated amount based on that, I just estimated an additional 2% increase uh, as a starting point because I didn't think he would, I didn't think the pay raise would, would factor in. Uh, I didn't know that he would get a pay raise next year. So I bumped it up by 2%, hoping that that would be a starting salary. Since then, I've met with the mayor, uh, finance and HR, and found that he would be eligible for a pay raise like everyone else. So it would be it would be thirteen percent. Currently, our sergeants are making thirteen percent more than the patrolmen. So that's how we came with that came to that number seventy nine one ninety. Uh, it's because he would be making thirteen percent more than our dispatchers. Are 
Are there any other further questions? Good. All right, thank you. Thank Chief. you. Thank you for presenting this this evening. It made it a lot easier to understand with the charts and everything in front of us. Thank you. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Mm -hmm. Move by Mrs. Sabetta, second by Mrs. Tressy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? This meeting has now been adjourned.
Good evening. I would like to welcome everyone to the October 9th Council Meeting of the City of Mayfield Heights. May I have a roll call, please? Mr. Balistrea. Present. Mr. DeJohn. Here. Mr. Mano. Here. Mr. Monaco. Here. Mrs. Sabetta. Here. Mrs. Snyder. Here. Mrs. Teresi. Here. Will everyone please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next is the approval of the minutes from the September 11, 2023 Council meeting. I hope everyone has had, has had time to read these minutes over. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Moved. Moved by Mrs. Sabetta. Second by Mr. Monaco. Are there any suggested changes, amendments, or deletions to those minutes? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? These minutes have been approved. Next, we will move to the, to the meeting of September 25th, 2023. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Moved by Mr. Balestrea and second by Mr. Manum. Are there any changes, amendments, or deletions to those minutes? Seeing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? These minutes have now been approved as written. At this time, does any member of council have any correspondence or announcements? We will now move to reports of officers, beginning with the mayor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, excuse my voice this evening. I have a little head cold going on. Um, I would ask uh, that we pause <clears throat> for a moment to pray for the people of Israel who suffered an attack over the weekend that can only be described as evil. So please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. <clears throat> so on a much lighter note, I would ask that the Otino family come forward. So if the members of uh, the audience here are wondering, um, I'm going to present the uh, A proclamation, I should say, to the family of uh, Larry J. Otino, who's done so much for the city of Mayfield Heights. So, whereas Larry J. Otino was born in 1948 and raised in Cleveland, and whereas he married Kim Martinowski, and together they raised two children, Nicholas and Bobby, Larry was a devoted grandfather to Veda and brother to Lynn and Peggy. And whereas Larry met Ray Negrelli in 1962, and from that point on, they were friends and business partners, building homes in the early 1970s. And whereas Larry's close friendship with Mike Oceanero similarly developed into a business partnership, Collectively, the three exceptionally talented men planned and designed developments with extraordinary pride and inspirational vision. And whereas Larry's acute interest and dedication to the city's growth led him to significant accomplishments, he raised his father's restaurant, Otino's, which is now the site of Panera Bread. He re redeveloped the former Spitzer Dodge dealership where the Ken Ganley Nissan dealership now stands. And whereas Larry's perpetual vision and passion for the new development guided him to construct Mayfield Town Center, a premier retail, retail development located on Sam Center Road. 
And whereas his most recent gratifying development was revitalizing the 13-acre Mayland Commons site, the area is home to Starbucks, Raising Canes, and Sheets. With available green space, residents will enjoy and be proud for many years to come. And whereas the city of Maple Heights and all fortunate to know Larry will be forever enriched by Larry's love, friendship, and service, he has left an indelible mark on our community and in our hearts. Now, therefore, I, Anthony DeSico, by the authority vested in me as the mayor of the city of Mayfield Heights, state of Ohio, and on behalf of the entire city council, the administration, and all present, do at this moment officially extend our most sincere condolences to the Otino family upon the passing of Larry and offer you our hope his memory will shine forever. My report. Wow. Thank you. Now I have to talk. I can barely even. <laughs> no. I'm going to cover for you. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> Thank you for showing everybody coming this evening in remembrance of Larry. He, he was very dear to the city. He, he did a lot for us, and we, he's going to be very dearly missed. We will now move to Director of Finance, Mrs. Fagan. I keep on forgetting you. I'm sorry. Right. Uh, <laughs> Director of Law, Mr. Murphy. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I have no report this evening, but I have a couple of items to note. Um, changes that uh, came to my attention since the agenda was published on Friday. Um, first of all, Braden Thomas, the building commissioner, has requested that resolutions 2023-90 and 91 be placed on second reading. Um, so I would make that request. Um, also, ordinance number 2023-17 regarding the purchase of tax delinquent land. Um, I just got the title report on Thursday. I haven't been able to look at it yet. I want to make sure we're not buying something that we can't use. So I would request that that be tabled this evening. 2023-17. 2023 <coughs> Um, and then ordinances 2023-19 and 2023-20 uh, were the subject of a legislative committee meeting. Um, I revised them the way I thought that the committee had indicated they wanted it, but I'm not sure that I did it correctly. So, um, and I haven't heard from either one of the members that uh, yes or no. So um, you can do with that what you wish tonight if you want to table it for now. Both both of them will be on third reading. Um, ordinance 2023-22 uh, regarding signs uh, will be referred to the Planning Commission since it's an amendment to the uh, Planning and Zoning Code. And finally, ordinance number 2023-23, I believe either Mr. Thomas or Council Member Monaco will be requesting that that be amended so um, if, if that's the case that can uh, that can be done on the on the floor I'm sure mr. Thomas will have something else to say about that um, and not so finally finally motions a and C um, which are approving uh, Planning Commission uh, preliminary site plans um, both of them, the applicant has requested that they be held. So um, when I read the motions, I'll just skip over them. I won't even 
I won't even read them. Although the applicant, I believe, wants to address council during the public portion of the meeting and kind of explain uh, the situation. So, anyway, that's uh, that's all I got. I guess that's enough. But. Are there any questions for Mr. Murphy? Mr. Balistrea. Uh, thank you. I think just one typo on ordinance number. We have two ordinance 2023-24s, I believe. One was the appropriation ordinance, and if I'm not mistaken. And 2023-24 uh, is also the uh, amending ordinance for the, the certain uh, departments for fixing the salaries. So that we have two. I think that should be 2023 05. Can you speak into the mic? Okay. You hear all that now? Do I have to repeat it? Yeah. yeah. It's 2023 24 needs to be changed. The second one, the 20, I think, to 25. Can you amend it on the floor? No, I just want to bring it up. Yeah, yeah we can. What was the other one? We have, two, we have two that are. Is my mic on? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, there's two 20, 23. 24s. That's it. I do. What? The dispatch of the answer in the agenda itself. It's like it's 24. So it should be 25. This one, this one, on the, on the, right, sorry. Yeah, on the, on the ordinance itself. Mr. Murphy took all my time. Um, no, I have no report this evening. We will now move to reports of committees, commissions, and boards, beginning with the building committee, Mr. Monaco. Thank you, Madam Chair. I do have a report this evening. Uh, on Thursday, September 28th, a building committee meeting was held at 5 p.m. in this council chambers. Present were myself, Vice Chair, Mr. Mano, Councilwoman Susan Sabetta, Director of Building, Mr. Brayden Thomas, HR Manager, Renee Augustine, and Deputy Clerk of Council, Shanisha Lloyd. The purpose of the meeting was to discuss, number one, part-time building inspector salary, number two, political signs, and number three, roof gutters and downspot replacement. As far as item number one, the current ordinance is part-time inspector pay listed at 2408, minimum 2531 maximum per hour. Uh, in our opinion, uh, this compensation is very low and uh, should be increased. And you will not be able to find anybody who has any certificate to work at that rate. So uh, there are two kinds of uh, inspectors. There's part-time inspectors and there is independent contractor inspectors. The part-time inspector will work as a city employee. An independent contractor inspector will drive his own vehicle and carry his own insurance. Uh, we were all in agreement that a $50 either per hour or a $50 per inspection uh, should, be, uh, should be approved. And the second item on the agenda was political signs. Uh, in section 1191.02.D3, uh, this section established the frame for placement and removal of political sign. Uh, since the 30 days prior and the 10, 10 days afterwards, uh, according to the law department, it cannot be enforced, it is suggested that those two sections will be should be deleted. Uh, we also did not discuss, but I found afterwards that there's a section that addresses political sign in a commercial establishment, and that is outlined in section 1191.024A. And it is my opinion that 
this section should also be deleted as it also outlines the 30 days and the 10 days. On the agenda number three, we had, it was in regard to section 138905 and specifically to add the following language to the existing section. Uh, number one, currently the, uh, the, uh, uh, this section addresses only roof gutters and downspouts. It is the uh, opinion of the building commissioner that siding should be added to that, and I concur with that. And also a language should be added to this section that states that in regards to roof and siding, all replacements shall match and conform to the original design or be replaced completely with a design acceptable to the rector of building. The reason why this was discussed and was brought to the meeting is because there's a lot of houses in the city that need roof or siding replacement and the contractor or the homeowner usually deal with the insurance company and the insurance company will not do any more than they're required to do and since our ordinance doesn't address that they need to replace the entire roof or the entire siding if they can, cannot match the colors, then they just do the absolute minimum. So I think we need this in our ordinance to give our building department a little more power to uh, force the insurance company to do uh, you know complete replacement if the color cannot be matched. And this concludes my reports, and I'll be glad to take any questions that any of my colleagues may have. And also, uh, Mr. Braden is here to uh, to answer any question you may have of him. Thank you, Mr. Monaco. Does any member of council have any questions? Mr. Belstra. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I don't know if uh, Mr. Monaco could answer that. I think it's more of a legal question. Or maybe Mr. Murphy can address it. But my understanding was when you, when there is a roof that cannot be matched, the shingles may not be found or too old uh, to, to, to incorporate the right color, that that's Ohio State Building Code, that they have to um, replace an entire roof. They can't patchwork the roof. So it's not only at the city level, but my understanding was it's actually at the state level as well. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Thank you. Um, so there, there may be some insurance verbiage language um, at the state level, but it's certainly nothing that we can enforce or get involved in. Um, what's happening is we get uh, phone calls from contractors asking about the requirement to match or replace, and then five minutes later, I get a call from the insurance company asking the same question because they're at odds with what the scope of the project is going to be. Um, so if, if there if there is something out there, uh, it's certainly not helpful to us right now. Um, so all this does is just give us that extra uh, pop that we need to get things fixed properly. My, my only question was, do we need something like this on our books if there's already a state mandate in the bid building code that requires so roofs to be replaced if they can't match them? Yeah, so uh, to my knowledge at this point, that's just a rumor that that language actually exists. Okay. So um, I've never read it before. I've looked a couple of times, but there's there's nothing in the Ohio Building Code that requires it. All right. Uh, All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Are there any further questions? All right, we will now move to Finance and Audit Committee. Mr. DeJohn. Thank you, Madam President. No report. Thank you. Legislative Committee, Mrs. Savannah. Thank you, Madam President. The Legislative Committee met on October 3rd. The purpose of the meeting was to review the suggested changes to Ordinance 2023-19 and 20, which are on the agenda tonight. Um, we do not have the minutes in front of us. Um, Council can address the changes when they come forward. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Mrs. Sabetta? Public, public Works and Service, Mr. Balestrian. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, <clears throat> I've been trying to schedule a meeting for a couple weeks now. Um, it's been difficult to get everyone I want together. 
Uh, we're trying to schedule that for uh, this Friday, uh, if at all possible, we're working on that. Uh, Mr. Cuny did send out a report. Uh, it wasn't, I don't believe, count, copied all of council, so I'd like to read his updated report uh, on the 223 roads program. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, the engineering department and service department and himself, they had a final inspection on Friday and a punch list of items were resolved prior to final acceptance being issued. Uh, number two, the, the sidewalk replacement project uh, has approximately two weeks left. They are finishing up Orchard Heights today and tomorrow and the contractor will be moving to the Long Ridge Marshfield area. Uh, the entire project will certainly be completed by the end of the month. Uh, the Crestwood reconstruction project, the cement stabilization of the base is completed. All storm sewers and catch basins are installed. 75% of the under drains and stone base have been installed. And the concrete paving of the street is the next step. Uh, he will send a two week look ahead for construction activities uh, once the con uh, contractor sends it to him. The die testing of the main line, main line sewers uh, is ongoing. They have found three potential water leaks to date. Not major leaks, uh, but there was some clean water getting into the sewer system, the sanitary system. Uh, the county has been notified. Uh, we cannot fix the main water, the main water uh, system since we do not own them. Uh, the private property dye testing is planned to begin uh, within the next two weeks. And that, that was uh, Mr. Cheney's uh, update for council. And he's here if you want it. If anybody you. has any questions. Does any council member have any questions for Mr. Bellister or Mr. Tooney? Thank you. Thank you. Recreation Parks, Mr. Mano. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, the October drive up lunch will be held on Tuesday, October 17th. Registration deadline is Thursday, October 13th. The Halloween bash is Friday, October 20th. Registration deadline is October 17th. For more information on these events, please call the Recreation Department at 440-442-2627. The Aquatic and Community Center is looking for part-time staff. Please visit the website under Jobs. Applications will be accepted until Wednesday, October uh, the 11th. The next Park and Recreation Committee meeting will be at the Aquatic and Community Center on Tuesday, October 24th at 7 p.m. That's my report. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Mano? Okay. Safety and Transportation, Mrs. Tressy. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I have no report this evening. We did hear in our committee the whole from our chief regarding the new positions and um, we have seen that uh, PowerPoint when we had our safety and transportation meeting in August. Thank you. Any questions for Mrs. Tracy? Board of Zoning, Mrs. Sabetta. Thank you, Madam President. Um, the Board of Zoning meeting has been canceled tomorrow due to no applicant's request. Also resolutions 2023-90 and 91 are on the agenda second reading. Thank you. Thank you. And Planning Commission, Mr. Balistrea. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Planning Commission met on October 2nd. The council was copied uh, on the minutes. There were three motions on the agenda this evening. Uh, Mr. Murphy has already addressed uh, motions A and C will be uh, not read or postponed uh, for two weeks as both parties work out details uh, on their plans uh, since some easements were involved on the, uh, the two properties. So we'll only be voting on uh, one motion this evening. And that's my report. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Bellistrea? We will now proceed to the public portion of the meeting. Pursuant to city code, each person will be allotted five minutes to speak with a maximum of 30 minutes allotted for the entire public portion. If you are here in connection with an agenda item, this is your opportunity to address council. However, please note that this is not an opportunity for debate or slighted comments. If you would like to be heard this evening, please fill out a form located at the public entrance and I will address each person as um, I call you. Please.
Come up to the podium, state your name and address. It is now 725 and I will open up the public portion. First, I would like to call Mr. Ben Chinaki. Thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Good evening, Madam Chair, uh, members of the Council. Uh, my name is Ben Chinaki, 1375 East 9th Street, Cleveland, Ohio. I'm with the law firm of Retzel and Andrus. I'm here uh, on behalf of the applicant for uh, re redevelopment plan approval for 5901 Mayfield. That's in your Council agenda items as motions 10A and 10C. Uh, Brett Landis, the president and CEO of the Landis Group, uh, and I were going to attend tonight to educate you about the project and tell you our, our, uh, our excitement about moving forward. Uh, that being said, um, those objectives and Brett's uh, efforts to introduce you in, in, that, in that endeavor, um, we also wanted to also meet with uh, the neighboring property owner at Mayfield Ridge uh, with an effort to try to resolve any dis disputes or differences that we might have had that were identified by the Planning Commission. Uh, Brett and I were uh, talking this morning while he was in the airport traveling here today and re we received uh, email correspondence from the folks at Mayfield Ridge indicating that um, unfortunately uh, that some of the decision makers were directly impacted by the events in Israel over the weekend. Rather than moving forward with a, a, an expedited meeting during those typical times, we've uh, agreed to uh, for, forego asking for your approval at this meeting and intend to come back in two weeks after uh, things have settled down and we've had the opportunity to discuss things with a clearer head. Um, so that's our objective and that's why uh, you, although you saw a flurry of emails between and among a bunch of lawyers over the weekend, uh, we wanted to make sure that you understood why uh, we were not asking for your approval at this time. One other item we wanted to address and highlight for, for council, um, it, it is uh, inaccurate to state that uh, or to insinuate that, that the Landis Group is uh, a disinterested out-of-state developer. Uh, they have been the uh, they've been leasing the property at 5901 Mayfield Road for more than 20 years to CVS. They currently lease CVS properties in Westlake, Middlebrook Heights, the City of Cleveland, and the City of Trenton. They currently have 17 real estate assets in Northeast Ohio, and since 1997, they have had more than or they've been involved in more than 100 real estate transactions in Ohio. We are not some disinterested out-of-state developer. We are uh, integral to Northeast Ohio and to this community. We also are excited for two major projects that are gonna be forthcoming in, in the future that are both currently the subject of non-disclosure agreements. We are eager and will continue to be a part of this community. Um, with that being said, uh, the being the, uh, the, the property of 5901 is uh, going to be changing because we received some notice that CVS is, intends to vacate the premises in 2025. Being a responsible developer, uh, we have engaged professionals, including architects, engineers, and the responsible individuals at the Landis Group uh, to figure out what the best future use for that property is. The redevelopment plan that we are presenting to you eventually aims to achieve those objectives, and we are eager and excited to talk to you about it in, for, in person and face-to-face and to work with city staff to address any concerns and questions that, that might come up along the way. Um, at this point, it's our position that uh, we are eager to work with uh, Mayfield Ridge as well, and we will intend to do so in the next two weeks. Um, we have certainly a desire to um, ensure that we comply with the code, and we have a desire to ensure that uh, this project moving forward is a, a, a win for the community rather than a loss which would be CVS departing and the property remaining vacant. So we are working towards that objective and we will continue to do so with the interest of the community in mind. Uh, that being said, if there are any questions, you can always direct them to myself, Brett Landis, or anyone else on our team who will respond promptly and we look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you. Thank you. This time I would like to call Rob Zimmerman up to the podium. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Council President, Mr. Mayor, members of Council. My name is Rob Zimmerman. I'm a partner with the Benish Law Firm in uh, downtown Cleveland. 
I represent Mayfield Ridge Limited Partnership. Um, as you can see, yes, we, we have lawyered up <laughs> those who are interested in this particular uh, development. As a matter of full disclosure, and I said this to um, uh, Planning Commission last week, you, you should know uh, I spent 16 years as a councilman in the city of Shaker Heights, uh, eight of which uh, I was, Mr. Bellstrain, Bell <laughs> I was the council representative to the Planning Commission and Board of Zoning Appeals. And as you can see, I'm still trying to find a way to uh, occupy my Monday nights. So here I am. Uh, I'm the one that sent you a letter uh, last Friday regarding our uh, position with respect to the proposed redevelopment of the adjacent parcel that the applicant's attorney, Mr. Janaki, spoke to. And um, I had planned to have a more detailed presentation this evening to go into some more uh, discussion about um, our, our concerns, some of which, most of which, frankly, were uh, addressed in the letter. And, and frankly, the uh, leader of that would have been Mr. Jeff Sokoloff is in the audience right now. He would have been leading that discussion. But uh, in fact, uh, because of events in Israel, this is going to be a, a different and much shorter presentation. I'm really not here to get into the details at all. Uh, I'm here really to express some thanks. Uh, the first that uh, I want to express thanks to the mayor for the very kind moment of silence at the beginning of this meeting. Uh, Mr. Sokoloff and I actually immediately came from the um, rally and vigil at the Jewish Federation in Beechwood. Uh, you'll see it on the news tonight if you haven't seen it already. Um, we're close to 2,000 uh, people of all walks of life, all different communities came in, in support and solidarity for the, for the state of Israel and the, and the horrific violence that uh, it has suffered. Uh, it's deeply personal to Mr. Sokoloff and his family. Um, his father is in Israel right now, as is his mother, as is Mr. Sokoloff's son. Uh, Ivan Sokoloff, uh, Jeff's dad, is the senior principal and owner of Mayfield Ridge. Uh, he's, there, he's there with his wife, Jeff's dad, and he's there with four grandchildren, one of which is uh, Jeff's son. Thank God they're okay. I spoke to Mr. Sokoloff this morning, but obviously it's a very, very tense and difficult time for anyone with family and friends in, um, in Israel. Um, we do have disagreements with the site plan. We are trying to work them through. We had a meeting uh, with, with council member uh, Balustrada last week. We have had some uh, meetings, well, really phone calls with, uh, with the applicant. I'm very glad that they have local legal counsel and uh, very much appreciate uh, your understanding of our situation. And uh, we fully intend to you know, make use of the additional time which is being afforded to us to try to work through the issues. The parcel in question uh, up on Mayfield Road has always been treated as a unified parcel. It always seemed to many people outsiders, including the city as I understood, that it was always on one parcel under unified ownership. That's not the case, but the reality is um, over the years, the parcel has been treated as a unified parcel, and hopefully we can continue to do that in a spirit of partnership and cooperation for everyone's uh, mutual interests. So clearly there's um, some work to be done. Uh, we intend to, to work with uh, the city, we intend to work with the applicant, and we're hopeful that by the next time that we come here, uh, we will have resolved our issues or at least made substantial uh, progress because we know that everyone concerned uh, wants um, the departure of CBS not to be, as Mr. Chinaki said, a negative, but uh, a positive for everyone. Uh, certainly work to be done, but uh, in the spirit of cooperation, we do appreciate that these matters are going to be uh, not acted upon uh, this evening, and uh, we will see you again. So again, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zimmerman. At this time, is there anyone else that would like to be heard this evening? Okay. It is 7.35 and I will close the public portion. We will move to resolution number 2023-90. Thank you, Madam Chair. Resolution 2023-90, a resolution confirming the action of the Board of Zoning Appeals of the City of Mayfield Heights in denying the Denver Barry on behalf of April Management Limited, 1592 Lander Road, variance to construct a new accessory structure on the property, Cuyahoga County Permanent Parcel Number 
4,750 square feet larger in area than that allowed by the codified ordinances. Second reading, um, and as I said in my report, um, this will remain on second reading. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Resolution number 2023-91, Mr. Murphy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Res resolution 2023-91, a resolution confirming the action of the Board of Zoning Appeals of the City of Mayfield Heights in denying the Denver Barry on behalf of April Management Limited, 1592 Lander Road, a variance to construct an accessory structure on the property, Cuyahoga County Permanent Parcel Number 861-27-011, five feet higher than that allowed by the codified ordinances. Second reading, remain on second reading. Thank you. Resolution number 2023-96, Mr. Murphy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, resolution 2023-96, a resolution amending the various petty cash and change funds and declaring an emergency. First reading. Is there a motion to suspend the rules? Mm -hmm. Moved by Mr. Bellstrand, second. second by Mrs. Tressie. Roll call on the motion to suspend. Mr. Mano. Mr. Balstrand. Yes. Mr. DeJohn. Yes. Mrs. Sabetta. Yes. Mrs. Teresi. Yes. Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes. Is there a motion to approve? Moved by Mr. Monaco. Second by Mr. Mano. All members of council should have received an email from Mrs. Fagan explaining the need for a petty cash fund at City Hall as well as the new aquatic center. We don't want to turn residents away from okay. City Hall so this will help save them a trip over to the Aquatic Center to register for various programs. Mrs. Fagan, is there anything else you would like to add? <coughs> Any questions from Mr. Dejan? <laughs> so are these, these accounts, uh, do they turn in receipts for the petty cash? Actually, these are, we're setting up um, a change fund for both places. So a change fund keeps that balance in it at all times. It's not going to be for petty cash. They won't be spending out of it. They will be using it for um, as a change oh, fund. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions? Roll call the motion to approve. Mr. DeJohn. Yes. Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mrs. Tressi. Yes. Mr. Balustria. Yes. Mr. Mano. Yes. <coughs> Mrs. Sabetta. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes. This motion has been approved. Resolution 2023-97, Mr. Murphy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Resolution 2023-97, resolution authorizing the mayor to extend for one year an agreement with Medical Mutual Life Insurance Company to provide for administrative services in connection with processing leave requests for city employees covered by the Family Medical Leave Act. First reading. Is there a motion to suspend the rules? Moved by Mr. Mano. Second. Second by Mr. Balestrea. Roll call on the motion to suspend. Mrs. Teresi. Yes. Mrs. Sabetta. Yes. Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mr. Mano. Yes. Mr. DeJohn. Yes. Mr. Balestrea. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes. Is there a motion to approve? Moved by Mrs. Sabetta. And second by Mr. Monaco. In December of 2020, the city enacted this resolution in creating with Medical Mutual a written agreement to help the city assist with administrative leave requests. This adoption will terminate on December 31st of 23, and this resolution will just extend the agreement for one more year. Does any member of council have any questions or comments? Mrs. Augustine is here, if there's anything you wanna to add to that. Okay, roll call the motion to approve. Mr. Balestrea. Yes. Mrs. Teresi. Yes. Mrs. Sabetta. Yes. Mr. DeJohn. Yes. Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mr. Mano. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes. This resolution has been approved. We will now move to ordinances beginning with 2023-17. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Ordinance number 2023-17, an ordinance authorizing an agreement with the Cuyahoga County Land Revitalization Corporation 
to purchase tax delinquent land in the city and declaring an emergency. Third reading, and I would request that this be tabled since I haven't read the title report, reviewed the title. Move to table. <coughs> Need a motion to table and then move to table. Move to okay. Moved by Mr. Valstrand and second by Ms. Chessie. This ordinance is now tabled. No, we'll call. Or roll call the motion to table. Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mr. DeJohn. Yes. Mr. Mano. Yes. Mr. Balistrea. Yes. Mrs. Sabetta. Yes. Mrs. Tressy. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes. This ordinance has now been placed on the table. Ordinance number 2023-19, Mr. Murphy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Ordinance 2023-19, an ordinance enacting chapter 155 of the codified ordinances of the city titled, Naming Rights to Government Building and Property and Declaring an Emergency. Third reading. Is there a motion to suspend the rules? So, motion to approve. Is there a motion to approve? Move. Moved by Mr. DeJohn. And second by Mr. Mano. The Legislative Committee met to review the naming right ordinance last week, um, I believe for a second time. And I will refer to Mrs. Sabetta and Mr. DeJohn to go over this and give us more information. Talk about the changes. You have a new ordinance in front of you that was amended. So either Mrs. Um, Sabetta, since you're the chair, um, first, since we have no um, minutes in front of us, um, I'd like to say that we did discuss each change that was made. Some of the verbiage um, I didn't agree with, um, but I understand from Mr. Murphy that the verbiage was placed and we changed the number of votes instead of a sentence that I feel would do the process good. So I would like to do as we did at the meeting and just actually run through the changes and review the changes. Mr. DeJohn. Okay, thank you. Um, the first change we made for a financial uh, sponsorship of uh, uh, city-owned property, uh, the minimum uh, for that will be $15,000. Anything else under that uh, will uh, be dealt with through the city or the recreation department or whoever. Um, there will be uh, and to all financial sponsored naming rights pursuant to this section shall be subject to a written agreement and that agreement will be um, uh, written by Mr. Murphy and the applicant will have to uh, approve that and the agreement shall contain a contract between the city and one or more parties that allow one party the exclusive right to name a property facility object location program or event for a set period of time naming rights are similar to a long-term advertisement and involve a financial transit transaction in the form of advertising or memorialization of a corporation, person, or other entity that purchases the right to name a property, facility, object, location, program, or event for a de defined period of time. So simply put, um, simply put, this is the agreement between the city and the person uh, and that they'll agree with that and the amount uh, for $15,000 or more. Um, also, uh, for removal of the name, um, that'll take a majority vote of five out of seven members uh, to remove a, a name from uh, a building. And that's for um, uh, buildings that are uh, named for uh, contributions to the city. So that's not a financial contribution, that's a service contribution to the city. So when you go to name uh, maybe the city hall after me, <laughs> so take my name off of it, you'll need five out of seven votes to do that. So. 
And you would also need five out of seven to uh, to put my name on City Hall. So, so do we have any questions about the, the legislation? So I do. Yeah. <laughs> well, first of all, I would like for you to explain a little bit the two sections, like you explained it to me. I think it would be nice for you to explain it to everybody how you okay. how you came up with this. But the one area that I'm concerned about still is the four out of seven for the financial contribution, the five out of seven, the five out of seven. I told you earlier um, that I would like to see this consistent. If we're going to do this, four out of seven, five out of seven, it should just be the majority, which is five out of seven. Um, Simple I, majority, I think, four out of seven. Whichever. I think Mr. Murphy can answer that um, because he said, did you suggest that it should be four out of seven for financial and then majority for service contribution? Because super service contributions is five out of seven. Correct. So, Correct. so, so that's um, definitely something that should be considered by all, all council. Should you want to put my name on this city hall, you should have a majority of the council wanting to do that. Now, for a financial contribution, that's going to be a contract between the city and the person. And uh, so just a simple majority is why we decided to come up with that. Pretty, pretty close. Yeah, that, that, that's probably correct. Um, for, first, I was just going to just clarify um, at your places this evening, um, the clerk has left the ordinance that was originally introduced before council back in September. Um, the changes that were made to it by the committee, recommended by the committee, are listed in in red ink so you can see what those changes are but the original legislation is is what's before council it would have to be amended um, if that's what council wanted to do um, with regard to the uh, approval and um, um, taking the name off the service contributions it's my understanding the committee recommended five out of seven to name and five out of seven to remove it's the same that way with regard to financial contributions the committee recommended four out of seven to establish and four out of seven to remove and that's the subject to a of a kind of, and that way that's the same too with regard to the um, financial contribution but that would be the subject of a contract too so Does any member? Oh, oh. Mr. Balistrio. Yeah, um, in context, I, I agree. I think that the the, the, the council and the city uh, should have the final say on, on any name that goes up or comes down off a building. The only thing I take exception to is the removal section, the last sentence that will include structures or property that are destroyed or permanently removed. Once a structure is permanently removed, uh, and I think that excludes any any right, uh, you know, once once the city has destroyed a, a structure or removed something. I don't think that automatically uh, should be a, a vote of council to say, well, that that person still has a right to that to that name. You know what I'm saying? I think that should be stricken. I, you know, I, I don't I don't like that language. I said once once a building is down. I don't know anywhere that where a building has come down and anything that <clears throat> is erected afterwards uh, would be named the same thing uh, without you know um, you know a separate vote. So um, that's the only thing I would obj I would object to. Madam President, this is about we did uh, bring that up in the meeting and um, the agreement. That would be something that would be in the agreement. That's what we were told. So, well, it's in the It's talking about service contribution. A removal is talking about 15506. Mm -hmm. Property or structure for service contribution. It's still. It's in the agreement. 
Mr. Murphy, is there only a written agreement made for the financial portion? Yes. The financial. Yeah, financial would have the the written agreement that would set out the rights, duties, and obligations of uh, the city and uh, whoever the other party or parties was. So yes, the agreement would only be with uh, regard to financial. I'm contribution. pardon me. The resolution. You spoke of the resolution happening. If the name goes up, you said by resolution. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Balistria. So, Mr. Balistria, the reason I put that in there is I think mm -hmm. once you put a name on a building of somebody for service to this, to the city, um, I would think that this council would want to vote on taking it off and then negotiate if it wasn't going back up onto the new building that was built, at least putting it on something else. So that's why that's put in this legislation. And, you know, I am yes, still uh, hurt that the city took my dad's name off of the Ross City Giant Community Center. And, um, and Mike, or Mr. Ballas, if your, your father's name was on that building, or if Mrs. Sabetta's brother's name was on that building, I think you would both feel the same way. Uh, so that's why it's in there. Uh, I think it should be considered, uh, and it should have come up back then, I think, uh, if it should come off and if there will be any replacement to the building at that time. So. Madam Chair. This is Tracy. <clears throat> um, I attended that legislative meeting, and um, I brought up the subject um, a removal of a name on a building. Um, possibly um, it was, possibly the person's name on that building has become um, a convicted felon or has, um, has, you know, disgraced the city of Mayfield Heights. And so that would allow city council to vote to take that, their name down. Um, I don't know that it has anything to do with Mr. DeJohn's, you know, father's name on the building, but I, I think that if, and I, I did my notes, and it, um, let's see, I can read it to you. Uh, what if a person or entity that donates is convicted of a crime or falls in, into uh, disrepute and it brings disgrace to our city? Uh, is there anything in the ordinance or resolution that addresses that? So I think that might be part of why you're voting on it to remove it. And I just brought that up um, prior to going to that meeting. Okay. What were you saying about a contract, Mr. Dujan? No. Um, Mrs. Charesi is talking about service contributions. Any financial contributions, all of that will be specified in the contract. Uh, so when it ends, what will happen at the end of it? Um, so Mr. Murphy will take care of that in the contract. Go ahead. Mr. Murphy. Um, yes, uh, in C, paragraph C, um, it was added after the committee meeting that the contract would have certain provisions, including reasons for early termination. So that will be in the contract. And that it might have been as a result of your comment. My comment. But it'll be in the contract. Thanks, Mr. Murphy. I appreciate that. Are there any? Mr. DeJohn. It's just one last thing. I could think of an example, but I won't name it here at this council meeting, where a building was named after somebody and uh, they did get in, into some trouble. And I heard the council was talking about taking their name off of it. So. Um, so that's another reason why it's here. Uh, just like uh, uh, Mrs. Teresi said, if uh, if something happens, somebody gets into some trouble, and they're no longer worthy of that name being on the building, at least this council would have some say so to take it off. Okay. Are there any further questions or comments about this? I just had a quick question for the mayor. With our new aquatic center, um, are we still looking at naming this? Because I 
I've talked to a couple different people in council and naming it just after our own city sounds good to a lot of us. <laughs> we really haven't had much discussion about it, honestly. Okay. Okay. Mr. Monaco, did you have something? Thank you. All right. All right. Um, roll call on the motion to approve. Mrs. Sabeto. Oh, sorry. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Mr. Murphy, um, hand up. Right now, the motion is to approve what was introduced, which doesn't count the committee meeting, the committee recommendation. In order to do that, uh, it would be proper to move to amend 2023-19, um, most simply in accordance with what's been um, laid at your places this evening. So I need a, a motion to move um, or yeah, to amend it. Yeah. yeah. I need a motion to move to amend ordinance 2023-19. Move. Moved by Mr. DeJohn and second by Mr. Mano. Roll call on the motion to Amend ordinance number 2023-19. Mrs. Sabetta. Yes. Mr. Mano. Yes. Mr. Balistrea. Yes. Mrs. Teresi. Yes. Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mr. DeJohn. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. <coughs> yes. This ordinance has now been amended. Now I'm going to make a motion to approve as amended. Move. Move by Mr. DeJohn. And second by Mr. Mano. Roll call on the approval of the new amended ordinance. Mr. Mano. Yes. Mr. Balistrea. No. Mr. DeJohn. Yes. Mrs. Sabetta. Yes. Mrs. Teresi. Yes. Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes. This ordinance has been approved as amended. Moving to ordinance number 2023-20, Mr. Murphy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ordinance number 2023-20, an ordinance amending chapter 121 of the codified ordinances of the city titled council by amending section 121.02L regarding committees. Third reading. Is there a motion to approve? Move. Moved by Mr. DeJohn. Second. Second by Mrs. Savetta. Um, th this is an amendment to 121.02, section number eight, and shall be read as follows. Items discussed at the meeting and action taken by the committee shall be dis transcribed in a timely manner. The members of, count of the committee shall have the opportunity to review the minutes for approval and make any changes or deletions. After approval by the chairperson and the member, the minutes shall be signed by the chairperson and such records shall be kept on file with the clerk of council and open to public inspection as are other public records. Um, Mr. DeJohn, you asked for this um, ordinance, so is there anything you would like to add to that? So, so just what I'm asking in this ordinance is that the member of the committee have a chance to review the minutes and give input uh, before they're approved. Uh, so it's simply, that, that's it in a nutshell. Any questions about this new ordinance or revision? Go ahead. Yeah, Mr. Thank, you. thank you. I just had a question and I brought it up to Mr. Dijon and maybe just for a point of clarification. Um, when we have a joint committee, you know, then there's, there's four members present. So at that point, I think someone needs to take the lead as far as the committee head you know um, when a committee is assigned uh, who's going to chair uh, number one and then if all those members need to review the minutes uh, then it's going to be timely so if you have a joint meeting and four people are reviewing minutes uh, for approval so i just want a clarification that you know that's going to probably add even more time when we have a uh, a joint meeting that's all. Well, I remember um, doing this in the past where we just, usually it was the committee chair. We used to get a 
email from um, the clerk and she would send you the minutes from the meeting and you would say, do they look good? Are they all there? And then she would go ahead and if you approved it, then then it would go to council. I think we remember that. Mrs. Tressy. No, I was just going to agree with Mr. Balistrea when you have, you asked for a finance and legislative meeting uh, to be held. So the chairman of finance is getting the minutes as well as the chairman of legislation. So that could take twice as long to get approved. Right. Because now you have four people sitting in that committee meeting and it could take um, our clerk. And it just adds more time. Right. Just adds a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Mr. Um, Murphy. Yeah, that was considered, I think, at the at the committee meeting and the, the within seven business days was deleted from there so that there's no time limit or, yeah, I guess time limit. Um, it just says uh, in a timely manner. So that's, uh, that gives legislation uh, an opportunity, everybody on the committee an opportunity to look at it. And it's on the time yeah, I'm sure. So I think it's covered. Yeah, my, my, point is, my, my, my point is that you have all four members now, according to the ordinance, reviewing the minutes and putting in their input uh, for changes or deletions where basically before it was the chair's responsibility. So now instead of one person, uh, you're going to have four people reviewing minutes for additions and deletions. Well, maybe we should remove a member. Yeah, no Mr. DeJong. So let me address um, Mr. Bellas, Balistria's concern. So, Mr. Balistria, is that any different than what we're here at this council meeting? All seven of us have to approve the minutes. So it's really no different. I'm just saying it's going to add more time. Yeah, I understand. Okay, it says, just so you, as I mean, soon the whole as possible. is trying to get this expedited, and, yeah. you know. It quickly. says as soon as possible. And, and the likelihood of us having dual committee meeting, I don't know. I, I don't think we've had one this year. So we're almost towards the end of the year. So it's very rare that we have dual we have committee meetings. We just had one. Just when? A legislative and building. Legislative and building. Mr. Monaco had one. I, I'm on the legislative committee. I wasn't invited to any building meeting. It was just building a building. Committee. It was just a building. Committee. Even, That's what I thought. Yeah, thank you. So, you're you're not a, you're opposed to add members to keep it in there then? Yes, I'd, I'd like to see the ordinance as amended uh, to be kept the same. I still want the, as I said, it's no difference than our council meeting minutes. We all have a chance to to amend those minutes when they come before us at the next meeting. So I don't see why this is, should be any different. I'm not sure. Mr. Balistrand. I'm not disagreeing with you. I understand. I'm not disagreeing yeah. at all. I'm just saying it's going to take even more time by you know enacting this where all members should see and have an opportunity to correct mm -hmm. um, before they come back to council for approval. That's all. Not opposed to it, but it's just going to take more time to get minutes back. Yeah, I think that that's what you were trying to alleviate. That was the issue that we weren't getting the minutes in well, time. As Mr. Murphy said, that's why we put in a timely fashion. Mr. Savetta. Yes. So um, I guess the chairperson, everyone who has deletions, changes, I would state that the chairperson should make the final approval. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm used to. Yes. Well. I mean, Mr. Valencia is correct. If they do have the chance to make changes or deletions, review, the chairperson still should make the final <coughs> So they probably would remove, as you stated, and member. read about it, it gives exactly what you want, but the chair still makes the final approval, and the chair is the person to sign. If, if that's what you want, I, I really don't understand this, but if you're going to, you're going to, if you want that, that's fine. Um, again, it's no different 
then these council chambers, when we have a meeting and the minutes come to us, we all have a chance to make uh, changes in it. Um, and I see a committee meeting no different. Uh, but if you want to be the sole responsibility of it, that's fine. Uh, and, but just keep in mind what, I, what I've said before, a number of times, uh, meeting minutes are, are, are very, um, uh, we won't go there. Um, at this point, if, Madam Chair, if I could, just real quick before Paul jumps in, um, I just want to put this out there to all of council. Minutes have never been the exact word for word um, transcription of what happened at the meeting. If we want it that way, I think we need to hire court reporters. I honestly believe if you if that's the direction council wants to go, because every meeting there are changes to minutes and they are minutia compared to the important parts of the minutes that are um, the main point is there. But if we want an exact transcript, I think council should really consider um, hiring court report reporters for meetings. And I think that just solves all this then. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Murphy. Okay. Um, at this point then, since there's been a motion and second to approve, uh, there's been a lot of discussion regarding the amendment. Um, it would be proper if council wants to amend what was originally introduced back in September to comport with the changes in red that were distributed to your places this evening, then we need a motion to amend um, the legislation uh, to um, comport with what was distributed this evening. That would be simple enough. Moved by Mrs. Teresi. Second by Mr. Monaco. I'll call on the um, decision to amend this ordinance. What, Ms. Would, that, me, what would that read then, Paul? Items discussed at that meeting and action taken by that committee shall be transcribed in a timely manner. The members of the committee shall have the opportunity to review the minutes for approval and make any changes or deletions. After approval by the chairperson and member, the minutes shall be signed by the chairperson. That's what's before us tonight. Mm -hmm. That's what's before us. That's no, what's before you is what is not in red. That's what's before you. What there, so what you're talking about, let me finish. What you're talking about is amending it to include everything, the changes that are included in red. That's the motion on the floor right now, to amend it. I think it's on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I need a roll call on the amendment of what you have in front of you this evening. Ms. Um, we already did. Mr. DeJohn. Yes. Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mrs. Teresi. Yes. Mr. Balistrea. Yes. Mr. Mano. Yes. Mrs. Sabetta. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes. Now I need to uh, an approval as amended a motion. Mrs. Teresi. Second by Mr. Bell's chair. Now we need a roll call. Mrs. Yeah, As amended. Mrs. Teresi. Yes. Mrs. Sabetta. Yes. Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mr. Mano. Yes. Mr. DeJohn. Yes. Mr. Balistrea. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes. This ordinance has now been approved as amended. <coughs> Now we will move to ordinance number 2023-22. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> uh, ordinance 2023-22 
an ordinance amending chapter 1191 of the codified ordinances of the city titled signs by amending section 1191.02 regarding political signs and declaring an emergency. First reading. So this ordinance um, needs to be referred to planning if it's going to be changing our codified ordinance. Move. Second. The president can just refer it to planning. So if there's any... I have a legal question, I guess. Mr. Belstrap. If, if this has already been deemed unconstitutional, the local signage, why does the planning commission even need to look at it? You've eliminated all the essential language. So it's going to come to planning commission and we have nothing to work with. All the no, all the no, language is no it hasn't been eliminated yet. It's suggested that by the building committee that it be changed that way, although Mr. Monaco did clarify that uh, maybe not everything there. So it should be reviewed by planning to decide whether or not it should be, uh, there should be a recommendation for adoption. That's required by the codified ordinances. Okay, I guess the question is if it's, if it's already deemed uh, unconstitutional, do we need to? Not all of it was. Okay. Not all of it was. No. All political signage was. No, no, only the timing. Only the timing. Timing, yes. So. Um, with regard to um, you know, location, size, things like that. That's something that planning commission will look at and come back with a recommendation. In fact, the para, I think it was paragraph B, um, perhaps should not have been recommended by building commission to, uh, or building committee to be changed. I gotta find it here. So, Mr. Mr. Bilsch, I have a question. If you're going to like review this, I would like to see if there's a way that we can just um, amend this by saying something. I wrote a little note like, um, the city has a, su a suggested timeline, just so that people, because not everybody, we we worked really hard. We had no signs at all, and we worked really hard at have, you know being allowed to have signs, but. The average person doesn't want to really break the rules of the city to make our yards look like trash for 12 months out of the year. Mm -hmm. So maybe a person could look at our ordinance and say, I know if I want to break it, I could because the state is saying it's okay. But there might be people that really want to follow the rules and just do 30 days so that we can still keep our, our neighborhoods looking nice just for 30 days. And not eliminating all of it 100%, but we could just say, I would like to suggest, or, or the city's suggested time frame is 30 days, as opposed to just getting rid of it and striking it all together. That can be done. Yeah. And Mrs. And Mrs. Snyder asked me about that. Uh, I did find the, uh, the draft ordinance. Um, number two says, on any residential property, show, there shall be a limitation of one political sign per candidate and or one political sign per issue appearing on the ballot. Um, apparently, that's more than what the committee was recommending. So when it goes to planning, that will be clarified. Um, also, as I mentioned, I think to Mr. Monaco, um, like if you ride in Willoughby Hill, as you see, like eight foot by six foot signs, and I think you should consider um, the size of signs restricting that because that can be limited by the city. It's just the time that you can put the signs out that the Supreme Court has determined to be unconstitutional as a violation of uh, First Amendment free speech. Thank you. Mr. Monaco. We'll go to Planning Commission. Mr. Monaco had a question or a comment. Uh, well, the. Uh Mr. Murphy already pointed out that section 1191.02b2 was never discussed, was never um, placed on any agenda, so it was added here in error. But what does need to be added to this, uh, to this ordinance, it would be section 1191.024a. 
And this ordinance addresses political signs in commercial properties. If we doing, if we apply this ordinance in the residential, and if we remove it in residential, we also have, and my feeling is that we have to remove it from the commercial, residential commercial property also. So this is why I'm, I'm suggesting that section 1191.024A will be added to this and section 1191.02 D1, I mean D2 will be deleted. D1, 2 will be deleted. Okay. Mike, did you make no yeah. Okay. Mr. Ballester, you made note of that, those two things. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Oh, this is Tracy. Sorry. I'm sorry. I just have a quick question. Is um when did the they deem this um you know, unconstitutional since I, I know it was the Supreme Court. My question is when, yeah. um, because people have been putting up signs for 30 days in this city for 50 years, 40 years. Um, so when did that take place? I mean, because it's really never been a problem in this city until right now. Um, so when, when did they deem that we're, um, you know, offending people's First Amendment rights? I believe it was 2002, looking for the memo that I did to council, um, stating that, and of course I can't find it when I really want it. It, it was, I'm almost positive it was 2002. And do most cities um, um, remove their signage from their codified as well because of that? I can't speak for any other cities. I don't know. Oh, I didn't know if it was a universal yeah. thing that... No, I do know that, um, as I told council, that it's remained here because it doesn't hurt anything. Um, it's just not enforced by the building department. <coughs> Mr. Matt, go. In most communities where I was employed, um, they pretty much had a time limit on the display of residential and residential and commercial regarding political signs. And if a candidate places a sign on somebody else's property and the inspector goes by this property and contacts the owner and makes them aware of the ordinance, I would say that at least 80% of the time, uh, you know, they will comply and they will move it because they don't want to be cited. Now, if the candidate has a sign on his own property and he knows who, you know, it's a different story. But I, I have a feeling that, you know, living on, I'm kind of a mixed emotion. I think living on a book is probably a good idea, but again, in the situation that we're in right now, we, we had a candidate who has been, who had the signs up for, you know, two months and he's breaking the rules while you have other candidates who are respectful of our ordinance. You know, they did display their signs and they could be at a disadvantage because they're obeying our ordinance while somebody else who disregard our ordinance is, is, uh, is getting an unfair advantage. So this is the reason why I suggested that, you know, we remove it. So if somebody put a sign up, then the rest of the candidate place their sign up at the same time. Um, but again, if the building department would enforce this, not to the candidate, but to the owner of the property, I think we would have a little more compliance. Okay. Well, Mr. Murphy. I just found that. <laughs> Finally, uh, it's the case of the city of Painesville versus Dworkin and Bernstein Company, and the year was 2000. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> so it's been a lot, a long time ago, 23 years ago, and we've never heard about this. Right. <laughs> well, yeah. All right, so we're, we've referred this to the planning committee. Ordinance 2023-23. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. Ordinance 2023-23, an ordinance amending chapter 1389 of the codified ordinances of the city titled Basic Standards for Residential Occupancy by amending section 1389.05 regarding roofs. First reading. Is there a motion to suspend the rules? So moved. Moved by Mr. Monaco. Second by Mrs. Savetta. Roll call on the motion to suspend. Mr. Balestria. Yes. Mrs. Tressy. Yes. Mrs. Sabetta. Yes. Mr. DeJohn. Yes. Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mr. Mano. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes. Is there a motion to approve? Moved. Moved by Mr. Balestria okay. and second by Mr. Monaco. Um, under section 1389.05 pertaining to roofs, gutters, and downspouts, there is added wording that will read as follows. Damaged or aged roofs shall not be patched or repaired unless the material matches the style and color of the existing roof. Thank you. All right. Mr. Monaco. Thank you. Uh, I had a conversation with the uh, building director uh, prior to the meeting and he suggested changing some wording to this. So I would uh, make a recommendation that we we'll put this on first reading. All right, thank you. So ordinance number 2023-23 has been placed on first reading. Ordinance 2023-24, Mr. Murphy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ordinance 2023-24, an ordinance amending the original appropriations ordinance 2022-28 for the current expenses and other expenditures of the city of Mayfield Heights, state of Ohio, for the fiscal year ending December 31, 2023, as previously amended by ordinances 2023-06 and 2023-14, specifically the transfer and supplemental appropriations of funds in various accounts and declaring an emergency. First reading. Is there a motion to suspend the rules? Moved by Mr. Mano, second by Mr. Velstrea. Roll call on the motion to suspend. Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mr. DeJohn. Yes. Mr. Mano. Yes. Mr. Velstrea. Yes. Mrs. Sabetta. Yes. Mrs. Teresi. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. <clears throat> yes. Is there a motion to approve? Moved by Mr. Monaco, second by Mr. Mano. Mrs. Fagan, would you like to um, explain these appropriations to council? Absolutely. As I've always said, the budget isn't a etched in stone document. It is a fluid document. So during the course of the year, we do find areas that need some adjustment. So this is our third adjustment for this year. Um, there was a legend copy that was sent out to all the council that explained those changes. Uh, I would entertain any specific questions anybody has. Does any member of council have any questions for Mrs. Fagan? <clears throat> okay, thank you. Roll call the motion to approve. Mrs. Sabetta. Yes. Mr. Mano. Yes. Mr. Balestrea. Yes. Mrs. Tressy. Yes. Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mr. DeJohn. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes, this um, ordinance has now been adopted. Moving to ordinance number 2023-25, Mr. Murphy. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> ordinance 2023-25, an ordinance amending ordinance number 2021-32, providing for the organization of certain administrative departments and fixing the salaries and bonds for certain officers and employees therein by adding the position dispatch supervisor to exhibit A, section five, and declaring an emergency. First reading. Is there a motion to suspend the rules? Moved by Mrs. Tressy, second by Mr. Balestrea. Roll call the motion to suspend. Yes. Mr. Mano. Yes. Mr. Balestrea. Yes. Mr. DeJohn. Yes. Mrs. Sabetta. Yes. Mrs. Tressy. Yes. Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes. Is there a motion to approve? <laughs> Moved by Mrs. Tressy. Second by Mrs. Savetta. Uh, this ordinance refers to the Committee of the Whole meeting held this evening where you heard from the Chief of Police. This is creating a position where there is a request to add a dispatch supervisor position. The salary is seen within the ordinance 
and this will be a non-union position and appointed by the chief. Any further questions or comments from council? Roll call on the motion to approve. Mr. DeJohn. Yes. Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mrs. Tressy. Yes. Mr. Balistrea. Yes. Mr. Bano. Yes. Mrs. Sabetta. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes. This ordinance has now been approved. Moving to ordinance number 2023 or 2023-26, Mr. Murphy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ordinance number 2023-26, an ordinance amending ordinance number 2021-32, providing for the organization of certain administrative departments and fixing the salaries and bonds for certain officers and employees therein by adjusting the pay range of building department inspector part-time exhibit a section seven and declaring an emergency first reading is there a motion to suspend the rules moved by mr monaco and second by mr mano roll call on the motion to suspend mrs Teresi. yes mrs sabetta yes mr monaco yes. mr mano yes mr DeJohn. yes mr balistrea yes mrs snyder Yes. Is there a motion to approve? Mm -hmm. Moved by Mr. Balistrea and second by Mrs. Tressy. Um, you heard from Councilman uh, Monaco this evening about what he had come out of the building committee meeting. Um, this is a, the addition of utilizing a person on a part-time basis for inspections um, in the amount of $50 per inspection. Um, Mr. Thomas or Ms. Mr. Monaco? Yeah, we basically uh, are increasing the salary for part-time inspection inspector for a rate of 2408 minimum to 2531 maximum, uh, which is the existing rate to a rate of uh, $50 per inspection. Thank you. Mrs. Tressy. So I'm, I'm just wondering, um, the $50, is that the inspector's gross amount or net amount? Are taxes coming out of that $50? Is that a 1099 employee? The $50 per inspection is the gross amount. It's the gross amount. And, and can I ask another question? Yeah, Mrs. Tressy. Um, and the inspector will do these inspections at your discretion? And your yes, they'll have a schedule, uh, a calendar, and proceed accordingly. Thank you. Does any member of council have any questions for Mr. Thomas? Okay. Thank you. Oh, wait, Mrs. Tressy does. I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Uh, Braden, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Thomas. Um, will he be doing like point of sale or no. will he be doing what? Well, no, these are these are strictly inspections that fall under the purview of the Ohio Building Code. Thank you. Okay. Roll call the motion to approve. Mr. Balistrea. Yes. Mrs. Tressy. Yes. Mrs. Sabetta. Yes. Mr. DeJohn. Yes. Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mr. Mano. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes. This ordinance has been adopted. We will now move to motions. Beginning with motion A, Mr. Murphy. Um, actually, uh, oh. we'll begin with motion B. A motion to approve the preliminary site plan for a new 11,659 square foot two-story building for Truve Metzpa, located at 30055 Cedar Road. Is there a motion to approve? Moved by Mr. Mano, second by Mrs. Sabetta. The plan was seen before the planning committee for an approval, five to zero vote, vote in favor of the preliminary site plan for the med spa. Mr. Bellister, do you have anything further to add? Uh, there was a, a disapproval by the fire department for uh, access to emergency vehicles. We, we do approve the preliminary site plan, but the final has to be approved by um, fire department. Okay. okay. So, any further questions or comments? We'll call the motion to approve. 
Mr. Monaco. Yes. Mr. DeJohn. Yes. Mr. Mano. Yes. Mr. Balistrea. Yes. Mrs. Sabetta. Yes. Mrs. Teresi. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes. Motion B has been adopted. Is there any new business or comments from council this evening? Madam Chair, if I could. Um, I forgot to mention earlier, uh, the website has been down. Uh, these have not, the website, I should say the council meetings have not been up on the website because there are a couple um, parts that we're waiting for. Um, I believe, we believe it may have been knocked out by a, um, a power surge. So we're waiting for the video feed uh, parts so we could uh, show it on uh, YouTube and our website. Um, but it is going to be uploaded video, I mean, audio only should be up tomorrow, I believe. Yeah. So I just wanted to let everybody know. And I want to thank the uh, resident in the audience for bringing that up. Thank you. This is um, on our website, correct? Stating this? Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments from council? I will entertain a motion, or I need a motion to adjourn. Moved by Mr. Mayo, second by Mrs. Sabetta. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, everyone. It is 8.30. We are now adjourned.